Brand new book that just came out, Conversations with the Rattlesnake, uh, former NHL star and best-selling author Theo Fleury joining us right now alongside clinical therapist Kim Barthel. You know, this book is so valuable on so many levels, and Theo, when you came on and talked Playing With Fire, it was profound, it was powerful. I was thinking this could be titled Conversations with the Catalyst, but you went with Rattlesnake. Why Rattlesnake? Well, I also sing and write country music, so I wrote a song called The Rattlesnake, and the, and the gist of the song is that the rattlesnake represents sort of the dark side of where I went. And this, this rattlesnake keeps talking to me, keeps trying to draw me in and keep me where I'm at. And I'm going, no, I'm gonna go a different direction. And so, you know, when Kim did the research on the rattlesnake, the rattlesnake sheds its skin, okay? Which is transformational. And really that's what the book is all about. It's about transformation. It's about learning about the inner, the inner self, figuring it out, and then, you know, moving forward. Well, your story's been very well documented. This is a great book about breaking the cycle of personal trauma. I was saying to you both, I feel like I owe you money reading this book because of the dialogue that's happened. But Kim, let's start about the idea of personal trauma. Mm. A lot of people have their personal struggles. How do we begin to feel safe in those difficult conversations? Well, it's finding the right person to talk to. When you're with the, a person who makes you feel safe and comfortable, that tuning in process immediately changes your brain and makes you feel more relaxed and safe so that those conversations can unfold. And there's the art of listening is so key mm. in something like that. Indeed. And for you to make the bold choice to share your story, your struggles, did you find it easier to talk to people, uh, like thousands of people on stage versus that one-on-one -on -one conversation <laughs> that Kim mentioned? Yeah. Well, I think at the beginning it was definitely that way, but, uh, you know, it's, I, like I've had over 500,000 reveals since Playing With Fire came out, right? And then they said, well, what, what do I do now that I've shared this, you know? Because there's always remnants of yes. everything left. And so when I met Kim, and I was looking to write another book because of the experience of Playing With Fire was so incredibly amazing that we said, you know, let's have this conversation and let's see where it, where it goes. And, and uh, you know, we're very proud of this book and I think that uh, it's a game changer for sure. Well, you know, I definitely think it is. And if we look at recent news with yes. the, the, the Gian Gomeshian st story, yep. there's a national conversation about, you know, this yes. personal trauma aspect. What's the starting point, Kim, for people that have gone through something that want to share but don't want to be re-victimized? What, mm. what do you say to them? Well, it's again that, that feeling of um, safety and I, a lot of that has to do I think with the media and what I'm seeing as I'm watching the media in this process is that there is this safety which is not something that we always are used to but there is a change a trend happening across our country where there is this comfort with the topic and it's exciting to be a part of that trend. And you know, it, it was it was inspiring to see a lot of the ladies that stepped up yes. in, in, you know, in the example of the GNK saying, you know what, they feel validated, they yeah. feel better with this. Who was the person that made you feel safe when you when you started to share your story? I think it was all of Canada. Yeah. Right? You know? Because to be honest with you, I was crapping in my pants <laughs> four days before playing with fire came out, because I didn't know how you were gonna react or the public was gonna react. But instead of you know, shaming me more for the experience, everybody said, man, you have courage and you have strength. And that was really the, you know, the door opener for me. And then, you know, I was in Toronto, Indigo Chapters, 400 people showed up for this first book signing. So I see this guy at the corner of my eyes, got my book like this, mm -hmm. his head's buried in the floor, and he's walking really slow. So I followed him all the way to the front of the line. He gets to the front line, puts the book on the table, looks me in the eye and says, me too. And wow. that's what I knew. You know, the purpose of my life was to help people struggle through this. And, you know, abuse, mental illness is the biggest epidemic we have on the planet. There's, there's nothing that I've run into that's bigger than this. And so, I started a conversation with Playing With Fire. I'm following it up with another conversation. I'm sure we'll have another book soon coming out with all of the feedback that we get from this book. Because we're, we're continually learning and my goal is to speed up this process. Because, you know, uh, another example, I had a guy who was 
72 years old, came up to me and said, I was abused for 705 consecutive days. I'm 72 years old and you're the first guy I've ever told in my life. And I'm going, that guy's life. Can you imagine what he's been carrying around his whole entire life? Mm. And to be able to create a space of safety in this country is what we need to do. And we gotta be okay listening to these conversations and, and letting people come forward and tell us their stories. Because when we do that, this country would be a way better place than it is because there's so much anger and so much resentment and so much, you know, and I know that because I lived that for a long time, you know. If it wasn't for the NHL, which was the best anger management class I could have ever been involved in, yeah. you know. It, uh, we, we need to make a change and hopefully, you know, this book will create some safety and create some space where, you know, we can start to have more of these conversations. Well, it's a great jump off point to do just that. Uh, a couple of uh, signings and speaking engagements you mm -hmm. have in the next couple yes. of days. Kim, where's the one tonight again? It's at West Point United Gray Church. At 5.30 p.m. they're going to do a signing and just after 7 there'll be a great speaking engagement. Thank you both for the words in this book. Very valuable. Thank you. Thank you for having Thanks us. For having